Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to my workshop. Switching gears here just a little bit this week, I'm waiting to hear back from a vendor who has a possible spindle motor replacement that's going to fit our DM2800 retrofit that we're working on. In the meantime, I've got a Clausen Colchester lathe here, 13 inch, and it has a turret tailstock. That turret tailstock has not been operating, and I've got a project coming up where I could potentially use that. So we're going to tear into that today and uh, try to do a cleanup on it and see if we can't get it back in operation. This turret tailstock is designed to fit the Clausing Colchester 13-inch lathe, and my understanding is that that's how ENCO actually got into business, building tailstocks to fit uh, specific lathes. Now this ENCO hex turret tailstock has lived uh, on the end of my lathe almost as long as I've owned the lathe. And uh, when I originally bought this lathe, I bought it for a specific project. I found it uh, in a local uh, classified newspaper, and when I went and saw it for the first time, uh, this tailstock actually sat on it. And I negotiated a deal with the uh, people selling it, and I really couldn't afford uh, what they wanted for the tailstock, so I didn't end up buying it. The lathe just came bare, so I still had to buy tooling for it, had to buy a chuck for it, I had to build a three-phase converter for it. So I had a lot of expenses going into it, and I just I needed that extra money, and I, I couldn't afford to also get this tailstock. Uh, fast forward a few years, and I actually ended up working for that company. And uh, this tailstock sat around for a number of years, and finally one of the owners said, uh, do you want this thing? Because we're never going to do anything with it. So I took it home, and it's lived on the end of my lathe ever since. Taking off this front gib, underneath there's a very thin brass shim stock, and uh, just looking at it, I didn't realize how thin it was when I rubbed my cloth across it. I almost crumpled it all up. It uh, only measures about a thousandth thick. I've got some production work coming up where this tailstock could actually come in handy uh, doing a couple different operations for me. Uh, so I figured it was time to get this thing cleaned up and working. The main problem that this tailstock has is the tool holders are all stuck. It's very difficult to change tools because the locking posts are mangled up a bit and they won't move freely. Here in the lower bed of the turret we have some evidence that uh, we were visited by mice in the past. It's kind of a weird place to live. This uses three quarter inch straight shank tooling and over the years I've collected quite a bit of it. Uh, when I see it come up on eBay I snatch it up if it's a decent price thinking that uh, either someday I'll be using it or if I ever go to sell the thing uh, it'll be more valuable that way possibly. That's probably wishful thinking. This is actually coming apart pretty well. Anytime I see tapered pins, I always get nervous, but so far all these are coming out really well. So I'm going to be stripping this down as far as I can. We're going to dunk uh, all the parts in the purple power, get them degreased, and then uh, the parts that have uh, rust on them, we'll be throwing those into the evapo rust. Hey, if you'd like to help this channel, the easiest way to do it, if you haven't done so already, is to click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it really helps the channel out. I always find it interesting taking apart older equipment like this. Some of the bolts you remove have a very strong odor of cutting oil. I'm using my color-coded hex key set again. I can't overemphasize how much I love these things. It's just so nice to know that, you know, once I know this bolt takes the blue hex key, uh, I just have to reach for it. I don't have to try fumbling through a pile of them to find the one I want.
So, are there dis any distinguishing marks? Tell me which side is which here. There, so this that hits that. So there's that plate. So there's our springs that it floats on. There it is. Fight me all the way. I let these parts soak overnight in the purple power. I'm going to scrub them all down and get them out of here. I'm going to follow up with the evapo rust on some of these parts, and then uh, a few of those are actually going to get the Oxfo blue treatment as well. So I took this bin of parts inside and I rinsed the purple power off of them. And now we're just gonna clean them up before they flash rust. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Just cleaning everything up with alcohol to try to uh, displace any water that might still be on these. I'm not quite sure how to finish that. I think I'd almost like to make this bright. 
paint this and paint the casting. But leave the machine surface. There's a few parts on this tailstock that I'm not quite sure how I want to finish, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to be asking for some input on exactly what might be the best way to finish a few of these metal parts. Somebody was in here banging away on this thing. The biggest problem with this entire tool post uh, is, is the tool holders themselves. All of them are jammed in and uh, you can't get them out. Makes it very difficult for changing tools. This would be better if I just had the right size wrench. But I don't own the right size wrench. See if screwing this all the way in will allow me to turn it. I just need it to break loose. All right, it might be time to take this out of this. These all have the same problem. The the lip that uh, the clamping area has been damaged and and uh, mushroomed out a little bit, just enough to prevent it from coming out. There we go. See all the shiny parts where we were rubbing getting out the damage done to that there we go all right I'd like to hear your thoughts down in the comments on uh, what kind of finish I should put on this turret here it's one of the few parts uh, that's actually going to be bare metal when it's finished everything else is either painted or uh, blued All right, we're gonna we're gonna dump this in the evaporust, uh, but that's not gonna be until tomorrow. It turns out that I spoke too soon when I mentioned how easily all the taper pins were coming out. I had a heck of a time trying to get the taper pin out of this bevel gear. It almost appeared like uh, at some point in the past somebody had broken off a punch. There was something very hard inside. I ended up having to drill it out. It took so long to do that uh, my camera gave up recording, so I don't actually have any footage of getting it finally out of there.
I went out and got a quart of Sherwin-Williams Haze Gray. I'm going to throw a quick coat of it here uh, under the sliding part of the turret just to see if I like the color. If I don't like it, nobody will see it down here. surprises me here in the video it actually looks white but uh, in reality it is gray I'm hopeful that we can wrap this up in the next video. At this point, most of the cleanup is done. Uh, we've got some painting to do, then reassembly. And I've got an idea of how I want to try to reproduce the original ENCO badge that was on the top. And as always, please like, share, comment down below. I really want to hear your thoughts on finishing the metalwork on that turret. And I'll catch you next week. Hit that subscribe button.